Coming up on Small Town Big Deal, a company that definitely marches to a different drummer. What an American story, started by French brothers. How the world's largest maker of band uniforms... Uh, she's fired. ...also created some of the most devilishly fun initiation contraptions for top secret societies. Oh. <laughs> Am I in? Welcome to Small Town Big Deal. I'm Rodney Miller. And I'm Jan Carl. You know, we don't normally dress up for our small town visits. No, but you know, when in Rome, well, or Greenville, Illinois. This is where the largest manufacturer of band uniforms in America has been hitting all the right notes for more than 130 years. Nice plume. Thank you very much. You'll find plenty of plumes braids, emblems, and these things called gauntlets at DeMullen Brothers and Company. I need to, to be Wonder Woman. DeMullen is the industry leader in music performance apparel. Millions have seen their designs all across America, worn by high schools, major universities, and the biggest parades, from Macy's to the Rose Parade. These uniforms are so highly sought after, even China imports them. In a good year, DeMolin will make 50,000 band uniforms, but don't forget there's also about 20,000 color guard and dance team costumes, oh, then, oh yeah, other uniforms as well. They even made these outfits for Atlanta's Olympic band during the 1996 games. The logistics you guys handle here blow my mind. The products that we make are truly unique. We make one of something every day. You said you might get 80 uniforms that you have to make, but they may be 40 different sizes. Correct. Do you ever get a headache? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Did you know that the first college marching band was founded in 1845 by the University of Notre Dame? The Mullen was founded nearly a half century later in 1892, and today, artist Michael Gray is the lead designer. What an American story. Started by French brothers. Yeah. yeah. Immigrants that came to America. Those immigrants were Ed, Erastus, and Ulysses de Molin. That's Ed who created the company. In the beginning, de Molin didn't even make band uniforms. So you're going to ride the goat today. This is Winkadink. They drummed up business, building contraptions used to initiate members into fraternal organizations, such as the Shriners. And today, there's an entire museum filled with the crazy gadgets. This collapsing chair Aha. still works more than a hundred years later. Why is it the trick chair? Because when you sit in the chair, it collapses like that. And it comes back up like this. <laughs> So how did the Mullen go from making contraptions to clothing? Our first two pieces of regalia are from the Odd Fellows. It was a natural fit because the lodges also needed robes and other apparel. These are all you know, very old, very old fabrics. So it's a company of innovation. Yep. It's a company of survival. And it's a company that from day one put the local people to work. Survival is right. The DeMullen factory has caught fire twice, the first in 1907, but they rebuilt every time in the exact same location in Greenville. It's a town of less than 7,000 people just an hour's drive from St. Louis. There's not a family in that town that's not connected to DeMullen yeah. in some way, shape, or form. And DeMullen makes that community the center of their operation. DeMolin also employs state-of-the-art technology. This dye sublimation machine heats up ink to 560 degrees so it can be transferred to fabric. Basically anything that you can create on a computer, you can put on a garment these days. This cutting-edge machine uses an optical laser to cut out patterns. This will be a very fancy hat. Yeah, I mean, take fancy. a look, what do you think? Yeah, yeah. Right? And this steam tunnel fills the garments with hot air to remove wrinkles. 
If we go there, will it get the wrinkles out of us? Yeah. <laughs> but above all, Des Moines values the good old fashioned human touch. An amazing amount of the work is still done by hand by some of the most dedicated employees you'll find anywhere. Grace Haynes retired after 60 years. In my department, we were family. We were for each other. And if one needed help, we helped each other. Janice Baldwin is catching up to Grace. Her 60th anniversary is right around the corner. What is it you like about making these uniforms? I like the beauty of the finished product. Yes. And the whole country's looking at it. Yeah. Yeah. When you see a band wearing a uniform you helped make, what do you think? We're proud of it because we're like, we made that coat. We was part of that and when someone's enjoying it. And that may be the most beautiful thing about a Demolin uniform, the love that goes into it and how it provides so much delight to the person who makes it and to the lucky one who gets to wear it. There are going to be kids that put on that performance uniform and maybe only once in their life an audience is going to applaud them. They're going to feel beautiful and special. And to think that I'm giving you a sense of pride and I'm giving you a sense of I can conquer the world, that's my legacy. You're going to make me cry. No, I, I don't mean to. Do no, seriously, you're going to make me cry because to, to do that, and to have that attitude about giving that to the young people. I love them. But I just wonder how good you could be if you had a little passion. <laughs> Still ahead, a battle of the band, uniforms. <laughs> no peeking, Jan. <laughs> Whose design will march to victory? All right, well, let's take a look. And just how far will Rodney go to join the club? <laughs> Welcome back to Small Town Big Deal, where the music apparel business is booming inside the Mullen Brothers and Company. And then it gets inspected, and then it gets moved over here. They uh, make so many band outfits in tiny Greenville, Illinois, that there's talk of naming Greenville the marching band uniform capital of the world. I think it's very possible that the history that the DeMolin factory has and, and all that they brought really to the entire world throughout the years, I think that's a capital that we could proclaim and proclaim proudly. From designing, to printing, sewing, to delivery, they do it all here, and they make it look so easy. Trust us, it's not. Man, that's heavy. So, Lisa, you think you're going to teach me to sew? Yeah, but I don't have great expectations. <laughs> I got a comedian on top of everything else. Okay, what do we do first? Okay, you want to line the middle of this foot to that stamping. Okay. And then you let it walk. You let it walk? Yes, like Pac-Man. Yeah. You think you can do it? Probably not, but we'll try anyway. <laughs> so I put it right in there. Yes. And then I hit this down here. Mm -hmm. But you got to put your hand on this crank. Okay, okay, so here we go. Turn. Oh! You gotta turn this, not okay. your material. Now she tells me. Okay, now I gotta turn that again. It goes that way. Oh, sorry. Oh, no. Oh, no. So this is Lisa's 35 years of experience. Pretty good. And this is Rodney's 35 seconds of experience. Okay, that was humbling. But I'm not the only one who struggles to keep in step with this talented band of uniform makers. Mary, it looks like it's going a different direction. It doesn't matter, as long as you got it in the right pile. Okay, it has a notch. This machine cuts side bodies for jackets, just like the one on mine. I'm a side body. And Mary enlists me to help her organize them into matching piles. Hey, that seems to go, but easier said than done. If you screw up, it's your fault. I know. Here, I'll just do the cleaning. Why are there two piles of these? They look the same. Because one's a back side body, and this goes to the front side body, or front front. I got you confused. <laughs> Did it matter which pile? Yeah, yeah. right? That's... Did I get it in the right one? No. Nope. Oh. One notch goes here, two notches over here. Uh... She's fired. Can't say that I blame you, Mary. Maybe Rodney can smooth things out learning how okay. to steam press. Now this seems more my speed. So then I 
put this down. Right. Then I give it some steam. Yeah. About that much? That's about right. And then I let off, and then I do this. Right. And then I move it. Yep. You're a natural. <laughs> Let's turn up the heat with a little head-to-head -head design competition. So what's the first thing that we should do? We're going to pick colors? We're going to find out who can build the better band uniform. I'm basing my design on my alma mater, the University of Missouri. After all, I was their tiger mascot back in the day. Yep, that's me getting ready to take the field my sophomore year. And then I want you to get in that orange section of the tiger head and that will change that color and you did it. Sometimes schools really like their logos embroidered. Mm -hmm. Can I pull it? Pull it down and then you can just take your corner and shrink it oh, to size. Okay. I think his plume needs to be a couple of colors. Maybe black and gold? I bet Rodney won't Good change his plume color. There it is. Yay! Excellent job. Thank you for your help. This <laughs> you is so much fun. All right, Rodney's up. So are you wanting to design a uniform for Benton? I think so. Let yeah, me at that computer. That. My uniform will pay tribute to Benton Middle School in Benton, Illinois, where I coached basketball many years ago. I'm going to have you come over and click on that maroon, and that will change our color to that maroon color. Oh, wow. And now we can go up and get our hat. Maroon? You can make it any color you want. I like so, something yellow or let's something. Let's come over here to our color wheel. Oh, I like that. A nice mustard yellow. Yeah. That's good. Mustard. Okay. Mustard. Okay. And yep. then white. And then white. There we go. Hey, you're becoming a designer here. Mm. What else can I do? Like, give it a little pop. I can put our logo right here. Right. A big V with a star in it right here. Absolutely. Now, I want to put Benton right here. There we go. Very nice. Hey, Jan, no peeking. <laughs> no peeking, Jan. That's right. This is serious business. And now it's time for the moment of truth. All right, well, let's take a look. Hmm. Well, I must say I'm, I'm very <laughs> impressed. And I think we found two new designers. <laughs> but if I had to choose, you know why? Because of the plume, I have to go with this one. Oh, my ah. goodness. Oh, the multicolored plume. What do you know? My hunch was correct. I bet Rodney will Get change his plume color. There it is. Although oh, yeah. I do love the, the Benton. A lot of good styles, a lot of good design decisions, lots of good color. Great job, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Still ahead? Which Demolin initiation device is the most devious? I said I needed to powder my nose, but this is ridiculous. Welcome back to Small Town Big Deal, where the story of the Demolin factory is about to get even more colorful than the band uniforms they're famous for making. That's right, we've just barely scratched the surface on the company's history that is so wacky they devoted an entire museum to it. Jen, that was a little too close. We're kidding, of course. Watch as the knife actually springs out from the board. It's just one of the wild initiation devices you'll find inside the DeMullen Museum located just a few blocks from the DeMullen factory in Greenville, Illinois. People today know them as a marching band uniform manufacturer, but when they started in 1892, their niche were initiation devices that were used by fraternal lodges like Modern Woodman, Woodman of the World, Odd Fellows, and all of these different groups that were so popular. But can you explain why the wacky initiation devices? <laughs> There's a couple of ways I explain that. It was to initiate or welcome a new member into the lodge, but it was also to have some fun. The first devices they devised are famously known as the Demolin Goats. <laughs> this one is the Ferris Wheel Goat. The guy that's being initiated is blindfolded, strapped, and harnessed to this piece, and it's pushed, and the guy rides like this end over end on the Ferris Wheel Goat. So all the ladies that were worried about what their men were doing in these lodges, they did not need to worry. But not all the gadgets were so goofy. Some really pushed the fear factor. This guillotine must have scared the spirit right out of the pledges. Guy strapped in, looking up, and... Oh, it has an automatic stop on it. And it would fire a blank right before it stopped. <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> so it turns out the DeMolin company 
patented about 30 initiation devices. These are the sliding stairs and the way they work in the lodge is the guy who's been initiated is invited to walk up the stairs, sit down, get comfortable, be welcomed by his lodge brothers, and just as he gets settled in, oh. we drop him down like that. <laughs> you gotta wanna be in some of these clubs. You'll find other rare artifacts in the museum as well. A lodge banner donated by John F. Kennedy. A royal robe made out of DeMullen factory scraps. <laughs> and this odd machine that mimics the sound of wind. This is the Daddy Doll. It's one of the rarest artifacts in our collection here at the museum. As a matter of fact, it's a one of a kind. In the 1940s, there was a young girl that grew up here in Greenville. Her father was a local dentist who was serving in the war in Europe. And the factory made that uniform for her doll based on her father's actual uniform. So John, what gave you the vision to start this museum? Well, thanks for the question because all of the credit goes to my mom, Norma Goldsmith. She was a 50-year employee of DeMolin Brothers. So in the year 2000, mom approached me and said, we need to start actively bringing things back to Greenville. And so all of these years later, here we are. And we found out the initiation devices have a magical appeal. I heard that David Copperfield is a collector. Yes, he is. It's kind of fun that I've become his go-to guy when he has a question about a, a DeMolin piece that he acquires. Collecting is one thing. Let's see if Rodney and I can stand up to the initiation. A lot of the initiation devices made by DeMolins were based on the premise of testing the guy's strength. We're going to see how strong you are if you're going to belong to our lodge. Let's see if you pass the test today. All right. Good luck. Pick up on those handles as hard as you can. On the count of three, one, two, three, let's see it. Oh. <laughs> Welcome to the club. Okay, Rodney, how was it? Well, I was expecting them to give me a pat on the back during the initiation, but not quite this. So I'm a little afraid to do anything in your museum, John, but this was for, oh, it says lung tester. So what was it for? The lung tester is one of the pieces that was patented by the DeMolin brothers, and most of the lodges you would have to pass a simple physical to be accepted into the lodge. And back then, we were testing you for tuberculosis, ah. and you would be instructed to blow into the mouthpiece to test your lung capacity, and we'll see how it works. Oh man, it's metal. It could shock me. All right. Am I in? Welcome to the club, Jan. But the Damala Museum has one more picture-perfect surprise. Well, Rodney, since you've been initiated today at the Damala Museum, it's only certainly have. <laughs> it's only fitting that we would want to get your picture for our records here at the museum. Sure. So we have a Damala made camera, and that is a handsome face. I'm ready to get your picture. Are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> We've been duped again, Rodney, and what an honor that is. We'll be right back. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of Small Town Big Deal. You know, I think one of the coolest things about the show is that we all get to learn something about America that we never knew before. Yeah, like that tiny Greenville, Illinois is the band uniform capital of the world. We love meeting all the dedicated employees of DeMolin and seeing the creativity and things that they still do by hand. Yeah, and then that museum with their colorful past. I mean, they <laughs> invented those devices for club initiations. Yeah, didn't know about the museum and never knew about those wacky devices, but we recommend you go see them for yourselves. I'm Rodney Miller. And I'm Jan Carl. Join us again next week when once again we celebrate the great stories from across America. Nice plume. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, Denise, almost 60 years at a factory is almost unheard of. And you know what amazes me more than that is that they let you come to work here when you were five. <laughs> <laughs>